Hello YouTube and welcome to a new Uni 3D Land tutorial. So we're going to break away from what we were doing last time with a animation tutorial because I wanted to do something cool, uh, well not cool but like it. So if you followed my tutorials specific, specifically or if you didn't, last tutorial we made it so we have an animation for our sword attack but we didn't actually put the sword on the character yet and I was thinking there's two ways we can do this. We can script it in or we can make the game have the feature where you can pick up weapons and obviously I'm more drawn to the picking up weapons because it'd be so much cooler so we will have to write loads of if statements later on to detect which kind of weapon it is so is it a crossbow is it two-handed is it one-handed is it fire or something but for now we're just going to do a simple sword axe basically one-handed weapons you hold so to start, we need to redesign our inventory. Now, I have noticed a lot of people were having quite a few issues with it, um, partially because, well, it was just crazy. So, linking the grids to everything in the grids description was just crazy. A lot of people forgot to add stuff. But make sure, if you have a, that issue, make sure you have assigned every variable you need in inventory GUI and add item. I apologise for that, that was my ringtone. But still, um, what we're going to do is redesign it. So, at the moment we have grids here which support three items. We all know text, tooltip and image. And grid description is to show our description. But that's good, but not perfect. So I want to change that. And we're going to do it by something we've done many, many times. We're going to use a class to do it. And when we use this class, we will have to change things on loads of different scripts for it will work perfectly. So we're going to start pretty much straight away by creating a class and we'll call it grid. Just grid. That's what I'm going to do. So, and I'm going to assign some variables into it um, from our actual player inventory. So if we find it, I believe this should be it. I want pretty much these variables actually in it so it stores its own variables. So I'm going to copy all of those, go back to inventory, do it and paste it in here. But it's not make them static obviously. Like so. And they don't need to be arrays either. So we need to get rid of all this. So item ID will be a string. I've lost it, there we go. But it won't be an array string. Um, it will be an int, int, but not an int. Yep. Just like so. So this one will just be a texture 2D. And item description will be a string. Now what these will be used for is item ID will be the name of our item. So we'll rename that to name. So players amount will not use that one because we'll link that directly to the players inventory. Otherwise we'll get confused with it. Buying amount will be named to buy price, so we're not getting confused between those two variables. Sell price. This will be nothing because we don't need that because we can link that straight back to here again so we're not assigning variables to two places. And item description will keep that as well. In fact, we will put the item texture back. Icon, yes. Because then we can assign it. So what we're going to use these for is we're going to create 40 of these grid classes for our actual grids. So we're going to use it. But the issue is, if you don't, if you put multiple ones of these, you have to create another function to only get the icons for it, or it won't work. But don't worry, it'll still be good. So below this, we're going to create our function called grid, which we'll just assign all these to. So I'll speed that up because we've done this before. I'll be back in a minute. So there's our function done, so I'm just going to the desk as well, we didn't change that. So um, if you haven't seen my previous tutorial on this, you probably should to understand this better. But I haven't put spaces in to make it neater just because so we can fit more on if we ever need to. So now I'm just going to quickly assign these quick variables and then I'll speed it back up now. So I've done that, now that one's done, but now we need to create a function well a variable which will store these so this is really really simple again 
So here, where we've got grids and grids description, we can basically just above this, we'll type var, and then we'll say grids, just because it's named grids already. And this will be a grid like we have here. It will be creating a grid, but it will be an array. And we'll say equals new grid 40, because we know we've got 40 in it. If you want to change your amount, change it in here, it will still work. So that'll create 40 of our grids. But how do we show our grids? Now if we were to just get rid of these two and scroll down to where it shows our thing here. Get rid of these two. Here it shows grids. But if we save it and go to play it, you'll see we'll be flooded with errors. There. So we've got loads and loads of errors. Now if we find the one that says inventory GUI here, it says no appropriate version of Unity GUI selection grid. So basically that code cannot work with Unity, Rect, Float, Grid, Array. That's right. Why? Because we've got Rect here, Float here, which is the value, and then this one here is an array. It doesn't like it that it's an array. So what we need to do is make it return whatever we want to show in there. So you'll not understand that part from now unless you've worked with returns before. But basically this is saying, go and grab where we did it before, a texture from it. So if we put inventory window, grab a texture from it. However, we're saying here, grab an array, and it's not wanting to grab an array, it can only want to grab one or two objects, in the case of GUI content. So what we're going to do is make it call a function, so we'll just type get icons, and we're going to make it call this function instead. And now you'll think, well, it's calling a blank function, it won't work. But if we set this function to give that um, the icons then it would work if you don't understand wait till we get there and you'll see so in here we're going to type var icons will be a texture 2d it'll be an array equal new texture 2d 40 so we set it to the exact amount of this so below this we're going to type 4 we're going to create a simple for loop basically var i is 0 i is less than and then we're going to set it less than the actual number, so we're going to set 40. In fact, we'll set icons.length. Yeah, that's even easier. And we'll put i++. Plus plus. So in here, what we're going to do is set this variable here, icons, to every single icon from our grid class. Now, if you've never done this before, it's really, really simple. All we're going to do is type icons i equals grids i, or grid. Grids there, look. Where is it, that one? Grids i dot icon. So what this will do is create a new variable called icons, which will be a texture 2D array. Then it will basically fill that with the icons from our grids class. But then what we need this to do is give these icons, where it's in this variable here, to the selection grid to show them. This is done by two simple words, and what we've ne never covered before, called return lowercase return, return, and then icons. So what that'll do is every time it calls on GUI, it'll come down, right, grab this function. It'll jump to this function. It'll create a new array saying icons. It'll fill the icons, then it'll say return. For, so back, go to back to where it was, icons. So it'll come, get the function. Because it, it returns icons, it'll return text 2D. Fill it with text 2D, carry on. So. I hope you understand that. The return function is a good one. I will not lie, I've not really commonly used it that much until now, but it will work. So if we go back, you'll see that we've got no more errors. Great, so let's fix them. So, the most common one is image not is not a member of grid, tooltip and text, tooltip and text, tooltip and text. That's partially because of the way we've coded it. So if we go back to inventory GUI, or GUI, 94, where's that? I believe it's in here. Nope, in this one. So, the error what we had was basically saying it cannot find grids, um, grid via tooltip, because we haven't set tooltip as part of our class. So the tooltip was the name of it, so we'll just type name. Simply like that. So, go to this class and find the name property. That all will work. Go to this class and find the amount of it, so, we best put the amount back in then, if it's wanting that. So type var player amount will be 
an int. Uh, we'll paste this here. Play mount equals PA. Put here PA int. So that's a lot better. So that'll accept it now. So here we need the amount of it, so we type player amount. So go to our class, get the grid value because it's an array here. So it'll go find go to our class, well array, get zero, which is our first one, and go inside of that zero and get the player's amount, which is here, and it will return that. Great. So grid's description. Now this one is identically to this one. Well identical. So we copy this, paste it in there. Grids.gridValue.desk. Simple as that. So that'll return that one. However, if we click it again, all these will fix themselves here. But we still have a few more. So image is another one, so 96. Where's 96 there? So if grid value is not equal to 1 and grids.gridValue.image.name, well, we don't, it's not called image no more. We just rename it to icon. Simple as that. So it comes up here, get the icon, is the icon named grid icon, which is a blank icon, else play. Really simple. So we go back and we have more errors to fix. So that one will fix. So we can scroll up. Let's work on our add item because this is a big one. This takes up a lot. So let's read the first error. Blah, 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 blah. Skip straight to the error code. Image is not a member of grid. Well, we just fixed that one so we can fix it again. So 23, 24, 25, 26. So let's have a look. 23 here so inventory the grids the i dot image well it's not called image no more it's called icon so we've set that one correctly tooltip i believe our tooltip was the item id so we put name text is the player's amount player amount so it's bouncing from, the, from this one to the other class then back so Get the icon, get the name, get the player's amount. There, yeah, get these basically. So we've done those. This one wants the description, so same again. So instead of grids desk, it's grids dot desk. And that'll return the description. Perfect. So we need to do the same for these down here. So icon, name for the text, tooltip was the player amount. And instead of grids desk, it'll be grids dot desk. Just like that. So that one will return those. And I believe that one's done. So we click it and a half of these should disappear. Bop. There we go. So here it says 25. Cannot convert string to integer. So basically on line 25 we're trying to say grab an in string and convert it to an integer. 25 here. That's why we simply get rid of this, because we set our player's amount to an integer in our class here. Player's amount, integer. But here, our original tooltip was a string, so that's why we converted it to a string. And also, there's another one down here, so get rid of that one. There. And again. So... Again, 38 image is not a member of grid. There, so we missed a couple out. If we double click, as you can see, we've got quite a few. So this is our if statement, which determines whether we've still got it or not. So we convert all them to icons. Our next one is 40, which is here. So that should work. Line 40, text is not a member of grid. There we go, grids.text, which is our player amount. So go to our grids, set it to the array grid, get that, that works. Plays amount, plays amount, plays amount. Do we have any more? Nope. It's probably going to show me another one. So 40, cannot convert it to a string. Which is there again. Where else do we have strings? We don't. So we go back and we're basically just picking off the errors one by one and fixing them and then we'll stick it on. So can I convert an int to a string again? 47 here. So this time this one does need to be. We've got that one mixed up. 
Players amount should go there and name should go there. That's it, because I was looking at it. Players amount, set to players amount. We don't want the name to the players amount, so we'll just switch them around. So now that should return those two errors to go. And our final one is our female text shot, which is yet unfinished, but not yet. We will eventually fix it. So if we open this one up, line 60, what does the error say? Image is not a member of grid. Well, we've fixed that one. We can just convert it to an icon. In fact, we can get rid of those prints. We don't need those at all. So we go back. And 61, 59, cannot convert grid to GUI content. So here. 59 cell grids i equals player inventory i so our cell grids is our GUI content so what we're going to do for this just because our shop is not finished yet and we do need to finish it is we're just going to note that line out that's all we're going to do because once we fix this inventory and fix our attacking we're going to come back and fix the shop so now now if we run it you'll see that nothing happens because we need to assign our thing so if we go down and see our grids You'll see that we have 40, we'll just change it to 1 so you can see for now. We have 1 element, so name, player amount, bypass, texture, blah, blah. Works perfect. Now let's assign a blank grid to it. So we'll type grid icon. I really want to try that one. Let's try that one. And now we click play. I'm going to change it to 40 just here because I forgot to do it. And if we click I, boom. You see it looks identical to where it was. I don't like that grid, change my mind. So we'll assign the blank grid to it and make it 40. So we've got 40 grids. And now if we collect things, it should work the exact same as it did. So we open up one of our grids. Open up the top two. So let's go and collect something. Open up our inventory. Looks like the same. Collect an iron. It adds it to iron or stone then. Collect another one. It adds it to wood. There. Perfect. The only issue is at the moment is if we click multiple ones, it doesn't show in the inventory. But it does show in the actual thing here. So, that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. Sorry if it's a longish tutorial. I really hope you understand it. Sorry I didn't zoom in again. I know I keep forgetting to do that. That's the class code. This is the new return code, what you've not seen before. So... Thank you for watching, I really hope this worked and helped you with your class because I knew we were having a bit of bother with that. Um, this way we just drag all the information and stick it into one grid. So each of our grids has their own separate information, it's like its own entity. Thank you for watching and see you next time.